had a son she named her son King Carter Hallelujah. She's a new mother. Amen. She put on Facebook, this is my first Mother's Day. Amen. Congratulations to all new mothers, whether it's a few weeks or whether it's uh, many months. Amen. I want to congratulate long-time mothers. Amen. You who were not a senior, uh, but you've been a mother a long time. Amen. Then I want to even congratulate spiritual mothers. Amen. Those who have not had a child come from your physical womb, but you've had something come out of your spirit into somebody else's life. Amen. You have birthed hopes and dreams. Amen. You have birthed uh, courage and perseverance. And you have sustained many by your love and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to salute spiritual mothers. Amen. And uh, I want to say to all those who have lost their mothers, because I'm mindful of the fact that many of us have had our mothers go on to be with the Lord. I want to say that uh, history records that our black Christian ancestors made a profound theological statement. They said, God is a mother to the motherless. And if mama is gone, God is still here. Yes. And before mama was, God said, I am. Yes. And it is God. Somebody say God. God. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. God. Somebody say God. God. It is God that gave you your mama. God, God gave you big mama. Uh -huh. It's God that gave you my dear. Yeah. What else do they call a mother? Amen. Um, mommy, it's God gave you mommy. What else? Did I get off of her? Whatever you call her, she came from God. And mother's love, mother's care, mother's concern is rooted in God's love and God's care and God's concern. And so I pray that God comfort all of you who mothers have gone on. And the Bible says the memory of the just is blessed. Remember your mother and remember her love and care. And remember that the God that sent mother to you is still available to heal yes. your heart and That's your right. mind. That's right. Uh, today, by direction of the Holy Spirit, I want to challenge you. Uh, what did I say I want to do? Yeah. I want to challenge you. Amen. I'm glad uh, the Daughters of the King, that was singing that. I'm glad y'all sang this song so people could get happy. Amen. Because uh, I'm not trying to make you happy right now. I'm going to challenge you. You can't grow unless you get challenged. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. And uh, God is a God that commanded you and I to grow. So I want everybody, this is very dangerous. I want everybody to lift your head up high. But close your eyes. Allow me to keep my eyes open so I can narrate. And I want you to imagine yourself leaving this life. And you sail up from Brooklyn, Chicago, New York, wherever you're watching this, California, the West Indies. You are sailing up from there through the skies, through the stratosphere, past the sun, past the moon, past the stars, past the unspeakable unknown. And you sail straight up till you see the bright lights of heaven. There, seeing the bright lights, you come to a great door. Sometimes when I go across the Verrazano Bridge on a sunshiny day, I see that arch. And I imagine it to be the arch of heaven. There, standing in the door is the arch of heaven. There, you land and you go past St. Peter, who stands at the gate. You pass Abraham and Sarah. You pass David and Moses. You pass Deborah. You pass Rebecca. You pass Apostle Paul. You pass all of your loved ones. And you go on till you're before the very throne of God. You have passed the sea of glass. You have passed the crystal fountain. You go past the beast and the 24 elders. Now you are there in the radiance of God. And you've always wanted to see God for yourself. And the veil is shrouded back. 
You are changed so that you can apprehend the divine. You see on the throne the Lord Jesus to the left. Hovering above and over is the Holy Spirit. And at the center of the throne is God. And to your surprise, there sits a big heavy set black woman. With thick lips, thick nose, seated on the throne. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she's tripping with love. Tripping with grandeur. She has a voice like thunder. She has eyes like fire. Yes, imagine God is a big, beautiful black woman. Now, nah, amen. Everybody open your, open your eyes and say, my God, my God. My God, my God. Now you can understand my title. The title of this word today is Mama God. But too many of us, this exercise is disturbing. Some would say, Pastor Taylor, why would you inject color into your discussion of God? Because God is not black or white. Well, if that's true, what about all those white Jesuses in your Bible? God is not black or white. What about those who still have a picture of white Jesus on the wall? If God is not black or white, if God is not a man or woman, why can't I see God seated on the throne as a black woman? Amen. Especially to many of us, hallelujah, if I tell the truth, can I tell the truth today? I came from Chicago. Y'all don't want me to lie on them, do you? But if you tell the truth, if I ask many of us to close our eyes, picture of God, we would picture somebody that looked like Charlton Heston mm -hmm. in the Ten Commandments. Come on. Others of us would go back, some of you all that's older, some of you young people won't remember this, but some of you older people remember Jeffrey Hunter. Amen. We were growing up in King of Kings. Yes, yes. But all these white men that you've seen play Jesus, who was a dark-skinned uh, man from Galilee, if color doesn't matter, why did they change it in the first place? Some of us, <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. when we talk about God being black, we just freak out. I remember I used to tell my grandmother God was black. She would say, God ain't got no color. I said, who's that up on your wall for me? <laughs> he white. And so one day I went and found a picture of a black God. Hallelujah. And I gave it to my grandma. My grandma said, who is this? I said, who does it look like? She said, look like a man on 63rd Street. I said, girl, that's God. He said, that ain't God. You ever had that picture of that white Jesus? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know you didn't fight with her, mama? Yes, Amen. You didn't argue with her. And I don't blame you if you have to struggle to see God as black. I don't blame you because I'm just like you. You and I are the products of 500 years of enslavement and colonialism and brainwashing so that we thought that everything good was white and everything bad, including us, was black. Preach! Preach it! And brainwashed So one day, hallelujah, I was in church, in the Living Hope Baptist Church, and I was imagining heaven. And to my surprise, my heaven was full of white angels. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I'm sick. I'm a black man here, and I don't see no black angels. I don't see any black angels in my heaven. And I said, Lord, wash my mind of racism. Watch my mind of colonial thinking. Watch my mind and free me. And the Lord said, okay, put the black angels in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I began to imagine black angels. And many of you know, if I come to see you in the hospital, I told you, imagine little black angels working on your body, healing you. Are y'all listening to me? Come on, preach. Many of you know that I told you, you ought to be able to see God as a black man. But now I want to go even further and say, if God is not a man or a woman, you ought to be able to see God as a black woman. Mm. You ought to be able to see God as mama God. Mm. Oh, can I go ahead and talk? Help me, sir. Can't stop me now, I'm here. Mm -hmm. This text is important. This text takes place thousands, years, years ago, in heaven. And God is speaking, the scholars say, to the celestial court. Other scholars say God is speaking to the Trinity. Uh -huh. 
speaking to Jesus and he's speaking to the Holy Ghost. And God said, let us make humanity in our own image. King James Version gives us a clue to what image means. Image means likeness. Just like human beings are body, spirit, and soul. So God is God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just as God is relatable. Hallelujah. So we are relatable. You all know many people now are depressed because they've been isolated from other people. Yes. Human beings were not made to be cut off from other people. Oh, that's right. oh can I go ahead and talk? Yes. You were made for fellowship. That's right. God in the celestial court said, let us make humanity. And now some of us got to free our mind because we're stuck in the King James Version that says, let us make man. Yes. Look at somebody and say, free your mind. Free your mind. And your spirit will follow. Your spirit will follow. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and says, free your mind. Free your mind. All you old parliament people, amen. You know what I'm talking about. Look at somebody and say, free your mind. Free your mind. And your spirit will follow. Your spirit will follow. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help them. So God fixed humanity in God's image threefold. Relatability, intelligence, character. And the Bible said God makes humanity male and female. Another one of the attributes of the image of God is wanting to govern and to rule. And the Bible teaches us that the image of God Includes the female element. Mm -hmm. right. Female element is not something that comes out of a male image of God. And here our language traps us. Somebody say traps us. Because when we talk about God, even I do it every Sunday, we say he, we say him, we say he. But those pronouns are not adequate to fully describe God. He traps. Are you listening? Come on. He, him, his are all inadequate words to talk about God. And they give us the feeling that God is a male God, but that's not so. The Bible teaches us that God is not a male. In Numbers 23, the Bible declares God is not man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should repent. 1 Samuel 15, round 28 verse, Samuel says God is not a man that he should repent. When Jesus in John 4 talks to the woman at the well, he tells her God is a spirit. And he's looking for people to worship him in what? Spirit and truth. But our culture, our society, and when, 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 and that's why we ought to always listen to oppressed communities. I said listen, I didn't say agree. And so when I was in school, I learned to listen to the feminists. Because I got up in seminary and I called God he and they threatened me. <laughs> Told me they were going to circumscribe me if I called God he again. And I didn't have a good reaction to that, as you can imagine. They were white feminists. But I learned to listen to them because when you silence the voice of the oppressed, you might be silencing truth and justice. I learned even more to listen, hallelujah. And I found out that I had been listening to the womanists following Alice Walker in the book of her color purple develop their own discourse about oppression and injustice to women. Yes. And I learned to listen to these women. And I learned to see how I was a product of certain modes of thinking that come not only from 500 years of enslavement and colonialism, but also thousands of years of male domination. And that it affected my ability to see things clearly, even the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, help me, Holy God. Help them. And if we're not careful, we will not see the image of God in the female. But you ought to be able to see God. My, my great friend, the elder Oscar Otis Owens, preached a sermon once. And he talked about the text. I don't have the text. I can give it to you later where it refers to God as the breasted one. Yes. He's talking about the breast of a female. Yes. And he said this was radical and revolutionary. And it was. It was so radical it blew everybody's mind. People didn't say amen. They just looked at it. 
Say, ooh, he's, he's really into something. Mm -hmm. Some of them said, mm, he's having a bad day. No, he wasn't. He was talking about parts of the Bible that are offensive to us because of our social conditioning. And this is important. Because if you do not see the female as the image of God, you can then abuse her. If you do not see God as mama God and see the image of God in the female, you can oppress her. In order to rape her, in order to talk down to her, in order to beat her, in order to manipulate her, in order to turn her from a woman of virtue into a prostitute, in order to have human sex trafficking, you must first deny the image of God as a female image. When you rob women of the image of God, because you know, in order for you to oppress somebody, you gotta put them down. In order for you to kill somebody, you gotta make them evil and bad. And this is what our society has done. This is why their children could sit on the neck of a George Floyd. He had taken away the image of God. This is why they could break in and kill Brown and Taylor and kill Sandra Bland and kill so many women. They refused to see the image of God in the female body. And this is a great sin. We, just because we black, we can't say, well, I'm black. That's a white thing. Oh, no. That's a Western thing. He talking about, well, I'm African. You ain't no African Negro. You've been here so long. <laughs> Everything white folk do, we do. We just do it different. Some of them we do better, some of them we do worse. He was talking about, I ain't, I'm going to the beach. Where's the suntan? I ain't got to put on tan. I got melanin from Africa. All that stuff is diluted. It ain't working for you. You're going to have skin burn. <laughs> You better go get some cream. You don't believe me, go to the beach this summer and hang out in the summer. Can I go ahead and talk? Preach, Pastor. In order for us to be healed of this sickness, in order for us to be restored from this sin, we've got to accept this challenge to see the image of God in women, to go past the limitations of our language and the limitations of our training. And that's why I gave you that exercise. I'm trying to carry you back seeing God as a man. Uh -huh. Now, it shouldn't be hard for many of us to see God as a woman, because a lot of us had a mother so strong, she was like God. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You and I, if we're going to grow, we have to acknowledge the image of God as seen in the feminine. So, God is our father, but also God is our mother. So the title of today's sermon is Mother God. And so, the ancestors spoke true. God is a mother, but not just for the motherless, because one of the things about a mother, every person had one. Are y'all listening? I don't care who they are. They're a human being. They had a mother and a father. So the title of today's word is Mama God. Somebody say Mama God. Mama God. Some of y'all can't even say it. I feel you struggling. Say it again. Mama God. Mama God. You've been saying Father God all this time. I'm just going to have you say it one day. Say Mama God. Mama God. The word Mama has a special place in the black community. In African American history, fathers were often sold away or prevented from being protectors and teachers and leaders. But black motherhood was allowed to flourish. As a matter of fact, black motherhood was allowed to flourish so much, black women mothered the enslaved children. Are y'all listening? Come on. I saw an ad the other day, and there was two women. They just happened to be white. There was two women, an old woman and a young woman. And it said, there is no love like a mother's love. And these women were sitting together, and they were touching each other. And it was, it was strange, because you could, I don't know if they were models, but I think it must have been a mother and daughter, because you could almost look at the picture and see the love. That word mom is special. Whew, help me. It was mama that fed you. Right. That word mama is special. It was mama that hugged you. Yes. It was mama that whipped you. Yes. And Greg, I said, thank God for the beatings. I don't know if Dean Greg, I said, hey, it could be pretty good. But I guess it, it helped me something. It was mama that taught you. Mama that made you look pretty. Told you you were handsome. 
It was mama that tended you when you were sick. Hallelujah. When you got hurt, it was mama that soothed your pain. Yes. And everything happened, it was mama <laughs> that was always there. Uh -huh. Where mama is so important to black people, we made an anthem. Y'all know we got the National Black Anthem. Uh, James Weldon Johnson. But in 1973, a group named the Intruders <laughs> made a record. What's the title of the record? Always Love My Mama. If y'all been in the sanctuary, everybody in the sanctuary said, I'll always love my mama. I'll always love my mama. She's my favorite girl. Yeah, I'll always love my mama. She brought me in this world. <laughs> and I was listening to the song. I wanted to listen to it last night because I was going to mention it. She taught me how to say hello and thank you, please. And she did something on her bended knees. And then the man says, this is why I said, he says, hey, mama, oh, mama. <laughs> if that song don't put tears in your eyes, something's wrong with you. Then he said, you only get one. You only get one. One. Amen. So I want to challenge you to accept this challenge I'm giving you today, the challenge of Mama God. Because you need to understand God not only as your father, but you need to understand God as your mother as well. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, y'all gonna go with me. I Come on, go, Pastor. Go. I feel the struggle. Come on. I feel so like struggle. But you got to understand God as your mother. Hallelujah. See, it ain't once once I once I received the challenge, it took me a while. But I was able to get it because my mother is very godlike in every kind of way. She's forceful, she's intelligent, she's beautiful. So when they start talking about God as a woman, it wasn't a very big stretch for me because of the kind of mama that I had. But it's very important that you accept this challenge of understanding God as a mother. Why is it important? Three reasons. Well, how many did I say? Three. It's very important that you understand God as a mother. How many reasons? The time I have left, I just want to touch on them right quick. I can't go into it. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it later on. But number one, everybody repeat after me. If, if you understand, understand. Mama, God, Mama God, you will understand, you will understand. Why, the devil why the devil always attacks, always attacks. the mother and the child. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. On April 27th, in Richmond, Virginia, 30-year-old Sharnez Hill was in a barbecue with people in her building. I believe it was a public house. She had there her three-month-old baby, Naziah. Three guys in different gangs began to shoot at each other. They started shooting in the midst of all the people gathered because the weather was nice. They shot Charnez Hill dead, along with her three-month-old baby. <laughs> the devil always attacks the mother and the child. Matthew chapter 2, Herod heard about Jesus, the king, from the three wise men. Since he could not find him because the wise men went back another way, he killed all the babies in a certain district. And Joseph had to take his wife Mary and flee to Egypt because the devil always tries to kill the mother and the child. In nature, the most fierce defender of her children is always the mother. Yes. Come on now. When the male lion roars, he's roaring about some food. <laughs> but it is the female lion who will not let you get near her cub. Mm -hmm. When the bear, grizzly, polar, whatever bear you want, you get around that baby, the bear will kill you. Mm -hmm. Because that bear will suffer no threats to come to that child, that mother bear. Hallelujah. It's always the mother in nature who is the most fierce protector of her young. So, this is why the devil always tries to destroy the mother and the child. Mm -hmm. And I want to I stop and I want to say, Mother, understand 
The enemy attacks you so he can destroy your child. Yes. When the enemy destroys your child, they're destroying the potential to change the world. Yes. When the enemy destroys your child, they're destroying the potential to expand the kingdom of God. When the enemy destroys you to get to your child or your child to get to you, the enemy is cutting off what God wants to do in that child's life. But how many of y'all know the devil is a liar? <laughs> the devil is attacking some mother right now. Somebody raise your hand and say, devil, you're a liar. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hell is trying to destroy you, mother, because you have a God-like power to send that read that text. Hallelujah. Who read the text this morning? Uh, Dean Page read that text in Revelation chapter 12, I believe, about the dragon attacking the baby. That's what happened in Virginia. The dragon attacked the baby. That's what's happening right now. The dragon and the dragon demons. Because the dragon swept one third of the angels out of heaven and turned the angel into a demon. Hallelujah. And the same thing that the dragon did to those angels, he wants to do to your child. He wants to turn your, if he can't kill the child, he wants to turn the child into a demon, but the devil is a liar. Yeah. Mother, the demon is attacking you right now, but does anybody that know God is your protector? Yes. Mother, the devil is attacking you right now, but do I have a witness that God is your helper, mother? Yeah. Do I have any mothers in here who know that mama God will never I say you need to understand God as mother God. This is the second reason. Everybody read out to me. If, if you understand God, understand God as mama God, God then yeah. you will for a minute. Amen. Let me really make you uncomfortable. God holds you like she's your mama. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God's love and action is called the grace of God. And the grace of God is when God gives you something extra that you don't deserve. Uh -huh. The grace of God is the love of God in action. It turns a mess into a blessing because God loves you like your mama loves you. God's message, hallelujah. God's love, hallelujah, as a mama messes up the devil's setup. And when the devil would destroy you, God turns around and gives you God's favor. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I, I was somewhere and I had my playlist on and the singer Paul Simon came on. And he had a song that said, when I was just a boy, I was a consecrated boy, but the devil called my name. And I said, who do you think you feel fooling? And I was a boy singing in the Sunday choir. Then he said this. Hallelujah. I heard it the other day and it shook me. He said, oh, my mama loves me. She loves me. She gets down on her knees and hugs me because she loves me like a rock. Oh, baby, she loves me. When you know how much God loves you, it will change your life. When you know it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've gone. It doesn't matter how you messed up. It doesn't matter who talks about you. Your God, your mama God still loves you. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, she's right there. She's right there. Uh -huh. Look at somebody else mess with him a little bit and say, she's always on time. She's always on time. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. How many reasons did I say I give you? This is the third reason. Everybody repeat after me. Uh, uh, repeat after me. Uh, the first reason was, understand, when you understand God as mama God, you understand why the devil attacks the mother and child. Number two, you understand God as mama God, you understand the love of God, the grace of God in your life. Here's number three. Everybody repeat after me. We need, we need to understand, understand God, God as mama God, as mama God so, that we will understand so that we will understand the loyalty, the loyalty of God. Of God. Mm. Come on now. 
We need to understand God as Mama God so that we can understand the loyalty mm -hmm. of God. Yes. I see men out in the street, gangsters, till they got arrested. Mm -hmm. oh. I've never snitched mm -hmm. till they were facing 30 years in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they shine like a commitment. No loyalty. I've seen people turn on each other. I've seen people turn on the person that helped them that was a bridge over trouble water. No loyalty. One of the things about our time is people are fierce because they have no loyalty to each other. When you understand God as mama God, you understand God as a loyal God. And this loyalty comes in the fact that God makes her children her first priority. Right. Okay, now talk about that. Come on. I'm still challenging you. God makes her children her first priority. Mm -hmm. And your God makes you God's first priority. Mm -hmm. Some of us have never been anyone's first priority. Mm -hmm. Some of us have never been anyone's favorite. Mm -hmm. But I came to declare to you this afternoon that if you trust in God and Christ, you understand God making you the first priority. Yes. Right. When everybody else, and that's what a mother does, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. A real mother. Yeah. When she has that child, she knows she got to give up part of her life. Right. She can't run around like she used to. Uh -huh. She can't do what she used to do. Uh -huh. She can't be what she used to be. Yeah. She's a real mother. She makes her child her first priority. Mm -hmm. This is what God does for us. Mm -hmm. When everybody else has given up on you, yes. Mama God still has hope in you. Mm -hmm. When everybody else has concluded that you are nothing or you ain't much, when everybody else says you're going nowhere, mm -hmm. hallelujah, you know your mama still pushes you on the path of progress. Yes. Has anybody in here ever had people give up on you but mama still loved you? Anybody in here ever had people doubt you but mama said, baby, you can make it? Anybody ever had people put you down but mama said, no, God will make a way out of no way and God will enable you to make it? When everyone else is gone, hallelujah, your mama is always there. And don't you know that's how God is? God is always there. Hallelujah, man is being taken to the electric chair. He was put into the seat. In front of him was a glass where the people he had hurt could look upon his death. Uh, somebody might call that cruel and unusual punishment. It was going to shoot thousands of bolts into his body. So as they put the cap on his head, and as they put the electrodes on his hands, and as they put the belt around his chest to electrocute him, he looked in the corner and saw his mom. His daddy was no longer there. His brothers and sisters were no longer there. All of his friends that he ran the street with were no longer there. His lawyer wasn't there. Hallelujah. His, 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 everybody was gone. His lovers weren't there. The only one left was his mom. And as the electricity filled his body, he cried out, Mama, save me. Mama, save me. And his mother, hallelujah, knowing the terrible event she was going to witness, was determined not to leave her son. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, hallelujah. Don't you know that's how your God is? Hallelujah. When you're sitting in what you feel like is the electric chair, God has declared, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Oh, somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout, glory to God. Said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. When you cry to your mama, God, God will send the elder brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, to help you. When you cry out to your mother, God, God will send the Holy Ghost to give you strength. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let you 
go. Oh, somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God glory right now. Somebody give God a hallelujah right now. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for never leaving me. Somebody raise
Thank you.